everyone and welcome back to my channel Shades of Neen where we do beauty on a budget. Our aim here is to find affordable, good quality makeup for everyday use. If that sounds interesting to you, please click subscribe if you haven't already, give this video a big thumbs up and also click that bell icon for notifications every time I upload. Today we'll be taking a walk down memory lane where we'll be reviewing my makeup collection and routine before I started YouTube. Don't judge me. I did what I thought looked good on me at the time. I mean, my products range between high end and mid end and a couple of low end products, but all in all, I think my collection was pretty bougie, but um, I also didn't know how to use them correctly. So we're gonna see how my technique has developed as well as my use of different products. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm not sure if you can see or have noticed, but I gave myself a black eye this week. So my eye is really swollen and purple and blue and yellow. So hopefully it's healed up, to, well it heals up pretty soon, but I also have like a gash over there. And we have two unwelcomed friends over here, so just ignore them, they weren't invited to this party. Firstly I just want to show you my what my brush collection looked like. This was all the brushes I had, including this retractable eyebrow pencil which I used for the spoolie because the product was done and I didn't really like it. I have one, two, three, four fluffy brushes. I got all of them at different times. These two were given to my mum by someone, I can't remember who. So she had given them to me and I used that one for contour now, but before I didn't really use it because I didn't know what it was for. This I used as a blush brush and as well as this, sometimes I would use my loose powder on that or on this not even loose powder, I used to use the powder compact and it was the foundation powder which just made my face look even cakier. So I stopped using it so I don't have it for us to review in this video. And then I had a bunch of random brushes. This one is an Urban Decay foundation brush or flat optical blurring brush. So it was for foundation and they sold it to me with my Urban Decay foundation which I no longer use. I also had this brush which is actually from the same collection that my mum had gotten and it's by Revlon. And then I bought like a bunch of eco tools and this one is a shading brush which I used for eyeshadow obviously. This one was for concealer. I never used concealer so I didn't really use this brush. I think I sometimes used it for, for eyeshadow. And then it just has a angled liner brush. Then I have two MAC brushes. One, they're both the 266S and they both angled and I used one for eyebrows and I used one for liner. And then I just have this random brush. I have no idea where I got it from but also it had the angle on the end and then a flat brush for my eyeshadow. I'll show you them again as I go through and show you what I used everything for and let's get started. So the first thing I usually did or do is my eyebrows. Okay, so this first product is by NYX as you can see. Before I really did think this was quite a high-end product because they had like their own store in one of our big malls and I was like, oh NYX. And it was a little bit pricier than like your normal makeup at a drugstore like Clix or Deskem that we use here in South Africa. So I was like, whoa, okay. And I also went to Greece and they had a huge mega store and I was like, okay, like, you know, this is good makeup. But the more I've used it, the more I've realized it is just drugstore quality with extortionate prices. So this is the Hot Singles shadow in the shade Tweed. This retails for 70 Rand. You can see I've used it quite a bit. So I would take a, this MAC angled brush and just pick up some of that. It doesn't have any shimmer or anything. It's just like a warm brown. Pick some of that up. I just tapped it off, which I never used to do. And I would just Hang on, we forgot about this spoolie. Firstly, we would brush the eyebrows. Never up though, just sort them out so they're not all over the place. Then we would always start on the end. I have that gash there, so hopefully this doesn't affect it. And I would just fill them in. No shape, just 
fold them in. Just continuing to fold that in like I always did and I always obviously started at the back like you're supposed to and then just shade that actually looks too good for what I used to do see my technique has actually improved so much okay let's just do this like I used to that's more like it then spoolie and just brush through them again just to lighten it out lighten it up and then sometimes I would just take a eyeshadow brush and just try and soften this up which I never really succeeded in but there you go this is what my eyebrows used to look like I mean it doesn't look terrible but it's just not as natural as I like to have it now I don't fill them as much I fill more of the end part and then I brush the front up so I'm just going to complete the other eye off camera so that we can just speed along with this and then we'll come back and move on to foundation. <laughs> the foundation I used to use was this NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop and it is full coverage foundation. I don't need full coverage. I have no idea why I was on this hunt to find full coverage foundation. I don't have terrible skin besides the this. So I don't have terrible skin, so I don't know why, but I just was so envious of girls looking so glowy and, you know, their makeup looking so flawless. And I would wear makeup and people would ask me, are you even wearing makeup? Like, just because I didn't really need it, but I just wanted to, you know, and I love makeup. So I didn't ever think there was something wrong with it. But now I do think there's something wrong with wearing a full coverage foundation when you don't actually need it. Also, I don't need matte foundation. It is cakey and it just doesn't blend well with my skin. But, you know, I've learned that over the past few months <laughs> doing YouTube. I watch lots of other creators, so I learn a lot from that as well. I did a course in makeup and I don't need this for coverage. The shade I got in this is called Classic Tan. I've lost the lid and I'm pretty sure this is not in date anymore. But we'll go ahead and use it still. What I would do, I'll take two pumps. Then I would take this foundation brush by Urban Decay. I think this is quite expensive actually, but the, at Sephora they always get me. They will recommend something with something else that I'm looking for. And I always take it because I love makeup. So I've wasted a lot of money on things I don't really need. I mean, who honestly uses these? I know it's handy to have, but who honestly uses it? I would take that and we would swipe that on the face look at this color it is completely wrong on me but you know I wore it for so long and thought it matched my skin I would just usually go in with a powder like I said a powder foundation and I would just cake that on top then I'd go in with a absolutely dry beauty bender and I think this is the one I used. I've had this one for a while now. So then I'll just go and swipe all of it around. Mind you, my beauty blender is dry. And we would just move that around the face. So as you can see, I still have bags under my eyes. So I would take a little bit more, use the end of the beauty blender and just pack my foundation on there again never dabbing always swiping I mean even before I started YouTube I mean I did watch loads of beauty channels because I love makeup like I said but I don't know why I just never took the tips in completely I would take like some things out of what they've said and then adapt it to the complete wrong way but that foundation is actually horrible this foundation retails for 15 euros, which is how much I paid for it. So that is roughly 250 rand. I've used a lot cheaper ones that are 100% better. I'm just gonna zoom you in so you can have a look at what the foundation looks like on my face. And I'm pretty sure it's due to using a dry sponge. But let me zoom you in and you let me know what you think. Can you see what's going on my nose? And it's all settling into my pores. After that, I would usually go in, like I said, with my powder foundation. But unfortunately, I don't have that product anymore because I didn't like the way it made me look more orange. 
so this is what we have so far next i would usually do my eyes i had three little palettes i'm pretty sure i stole this one from my mum. i don't even think maybelline make these anymore but i'm pretty sure i stole it from her because i don't ever recall buying it and then we have this wet n wild one i didn't even know i've ever owned anything from wet n wild but apparently this was from wet n wild and i'm pretty sure i stole it from my mom too so i didn't i don't recall ever using it but i know that this one was my ride or die for maybe a year or two <laughs> and i only ever used this so this retails well retailed for about 30 when I got it I got it from Sephora in Dubai and that roughly equates to like 500 Rand I have seen on their site that obviously they brought down the price because this is an older palette and I think it is $20 now which is about 400 Rand so not much difference but this is old and I haven't gotten rid of it because it was the only one I had I dropped it a couple times lost some shadows but you know we still make do because it was expensive what I would do with this is so no eyeshadow primer obviously and my favorite to do was I would go in with this darker orange over here so I've I was taught and I did learn that you know with for smaller eyes you put the darkest colors on the outside and bring it into the lightest color I would try and blend. I'm gonna blend now just because I'm so used to it. But I would just place this on the outer corners of the eye. And then same brush, we'll go in with this lighter yellow over here and layer that with the darker orange. I hope this orange isn't emphasizing the blue in my eye. And then we'd take a flat brush, you know, that was smart of me, I guess and dip into this shade or the shade usually we'll just go with this one today but i used to always use either of those and pick it up on the brush no tapping obviously and we would place that in the inner third bringing it over so not terrible technique but terrible placement i think there was not much blending i didn't have many brushes like i said i just didn't know what to do with them and mind you, I only started wearing makeup like full time about six years ago when I started in the career that I am in now. And um, I was actually told by our captain that I needed to wear makeup because it helped us get more tips for tartars. That's the eyeshadow done. And I thought it was beautiful because it had some sparkle, it had some dimension, but no shape whatsoever. Then we'd go in with this MAC gel liner. It is called the Black Track Pro Longwear Fluid Liner Eyeliner Gel. And whew, I can't believe I bought so many MAC products. I was at one stage wearing their foundation as well, but it's too heavy. Like it would just clog my pores and make my, especially my T-zone really, really oily. So I stopped using all MAC foundations because even their lightwear one was quite heavy. This one I got in South Africa, so I'm going to give it to you in South African rands. And this is 315 rand for this little piece of stuff. <laughs> so this is very old, very old. I probably shouldn't be putting it on my eyes. I think I've put some setting spray in there just to loosen it all up because it was going very dry. So we would just... line the eye this is so dry even though i've tried to moisten it so i'm just going to complete the other eye off camera and then we'll come back and move on for mascara you've seen this on my channel before i used the smashbox super fan fanned out mascara false look so false lash look so this is the one i also got it from sephora this at the moment retails for 19 dollars no 19 pounds i don't know why i saw it in pounds i saw it on beauty bear but this is 19 pounds which is roughly roughly 400 rand for a mascara i have no idea and it's not even that great it flakes a lot this was my favorite at the time because it made my lashes look long and clumpy and i've had it for about two years don't judge me. So I would usually just use a mascara until it was done. I didn't even realize they had expiry dates. I thought when it was dry, you throw it out. Let's just give a quick coat of mascara. 
So that's mascara done. Look how clumpy they are. Next product we have is this blush. I'm pretty sure you've seen it on my channel before as well. It is the MAC Love Joy Mer Mineralized. I can never say that word. Mineralized blush. And I do still love this one. Honestly, it's the one repurchase I always make from MAC. Look at it. It's so, so pretty. <sighs> It pains me to say it, but this retails for 490 Rand still today. Like, I can't believe I went out and bought this numerous times. I usually use this brush, give it a nice swirl. I've always been a blush freak though. This brush isn't even good for this. The hairs will fall out, which I knew before. But layer that up usually. I've always taken it quite high because I don't know I just really love this blush it gives like a nice little shimmer and that's it for blush so for look I have a couple but I mean these were really my favorites they are the Urban Decay Vice I think Vice Love or something like that I got these from Sephora as well and they retail for about $20 each I think it is and that's roughly 400 rand for a lipstick so this one is my absolute favorite this shade is called 1993 comfort matte and that is the shade look it's almost done and I hardly ever finish lipstick so that's something it is the closest to my nude color and I would either wear this one or this one like I said and this one's called bad blood which is also comfort matte and still quite a bit of that left but you can see it's been used and i used to love red lipstick so we're gonna go for red lip today sorry i'm moving around a lot so i just have a lot going on around me i think i always move around a lot i can't sit still anyway so no lip liner no lip balm nothing just slap on the lipstick and we're on our way this isn't really a comfort mat to be honest the other one is more so this one is a bit more drying So guys, this is our finished look. So this is basically the look I used to wear anywhere and everywhere I went, where it was. Whether it was a beach club, a nightclub, this is the makeup I would wear. Sometimes I would go a little bit darker and use the dark browns, you know, feeling a little bit adventurous, but I knew that it closed my eyes off quite a bit. So this is our finished look. I'm gonna zoom you in so you can see just how different my technique was. guys so final thoughts as you can see my technique has changed and improved quite a bit if i say so myself i'm not being in like a vein or anything but i have been practicing and i have been putting in time i have spent a little bit of money trying to improve like doing courses and you know just practicing as much as i can obviously this week it was a little bit difficult because of my eye it happened on monday and today is friday so this is the swelling just coming down now another product i also used to use and it looks disgusting so don't judge me but was this contour palette from forever 21 and even though i used to watch tutorials on how to contour i just could not figure it out i don't know it was just so confusing contour one two three and i was like do you use them in that order like i'm not realizing it depends on your shade which was never really explained in any of the videos I watched. A lot of these products I think I am going to be throwing out, namely the foundation and those two palettes that I stole from my mom. I might just give it back to her because I have absolutely no use for them. They're all shimmers as well. What was I think? Please let me know if you've noticed a change in my technique and how I do my makeup and what you think of this <laughs> makeup. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up and also comment for engagement. It helps me out so much. But with that said, hope everybody has a great evening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me. You have no idea how much it means. I have had a lot going on at the moment and honestly, this is the only thing keeping me sane. But yeah, I love you all so much. Thank you so much for your support again. And that's it from me. Bye.